you know, where America's at today, and I don't want to get too political by any sense of the word, but so much is controlled by corporation money and lobbying and so on. And I thought of the story of a guy that had a fantastic little business going. He had this clothing store. It was just awesome, and he was just prospering so well that corporations saw that what he was doing, and so they decided to buy him out, but he wouldn't sell. So the corporation built, bought this entire block and built it all into a major mall and corporation. Everything you could want to buy was present in all of it, except they couldn't get the guy with a little store to sell. So they got all done, finished, beautiful, five-story building up and over the top of him. And they went to open up, and the man went outside and put up main entrance. <laughs> so there's always a way of getting around it somehow. Y'all okay? Yep. Good morning, good morning. I want to share, we're continuing on with... Uh, you know, just kind of going back to some real basics. Uh, we just got through doing a conference down in, in Dallas uh, with pastors and teaching on the value of the local church, teaching on how to lay foundations for a church and helping pastors. Uh, it's a great conference. We had a wonderful time. I uh, got home late Friday night, and uh, I started to work on this uh, actually a couple weeks ago, knowing I was going to be out of town. And so we've been talking about the blood and the power of the blood, and I'm I, I just going to reiterate some things. Uh, remember the story of uh, Moses bringing them out of the Egypt and that simple thing, but what was it that really got them out? It was the tenth plague. We know that. We've talked about it a lot. But I remember that they took the blood of an animal and they were to take the lamb into their house and they were told don't leave the house and of course I believe that's why it's so important to stay around the word and stay in the house of the Lord and be planted in the house of the Lord where you can draw on the water and the living water of that house that preaches the word it's not about the pastor or who delivers it it's about the word that comes forth that has the power to change your life impact you in some positive and wonderful way and make you tomorrow's better simply by believing something that God has said, like by his stripes you're healed, or he became poor that you might be made rich, or he's given you joy that passes understanding, peace that passes understanding, favor. I mean, the, all of the promises uh, have been made available. And so uh, they took hyssop and they dipped it in that blood of the lamb. And they splashed it all. I mean, if you can just get a picture of how it was done, the lintel would be the top, that's Father God and the Son and the Holy Spirit on the two doorposts. And they splashed blood. Uh, I can imagine how it splattered. And just think about that because we'll end with a scripture that relates. And so it splattered on that. And it said, go in and don't leave the house. And there they were to eat basically the lamb, burn the fat, there were certain things not to eat. There were certain things to do. So there was the Word of God. We've been given the responsibility to consume all of the Word of God and have an understanding of the Word of God and know how to apply the Word of God to our everyday lives through faith and through grace and through the power of God. And, but what stopped death? What stopped sickness? What stopped, in fact, the Bible says that when they did leave by the power of the blood, somebody say amen. amen, by the power of the blood, they were released from the world system. They were released, in fact, when they left, in Psalms, David wrote, they left with none halt or sick among them. Now these are people that had been beaten, starved, raped, nearly destroyed for 430 years under false gods. But when they left, there was none sick, none halt, and 
they left with the wealth of Egypt. Now the point of all of that is to say, think about what the power of the blood of an animal that was blessed by God did. How much more do you think the blood of Jesus Christ can be applied to your life from the house and change your life? I mean, we have to actually think about that. What was the blood about? I didn't know how this sermon's going to go. I have no idea. Holy Ghost is going to have to take care of it. So, Marina, Pastor Marina alluded to Galatians chapter uh, 3 that talks about the Abraham. And of course, we're about the Abraham covenant of the blood through the cross. And the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus released or birthed the Abrahamic covenant. But the Abrahamic covenant was a plan all the way from the foundation. It released the time of the church or the seventh day or the, the Sabbath starts on the seventh day, which is the church age that we're in today. Hello? Hello? And the power of Jesus or the Christ or the anointing has released and birthed something that we call the house or the church. Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church. And he's talking about on the tree of life, on Christ Jesus, on the anointed one, Christ. I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not Somebody say, will not prevail against those that are planted in the house. If you're a potted plant, get out of your pot and get in the house. This might be for those that are couching today. I decided on my way up here I shouldn't use the word couch because neurolinguistics say if you say it enough, everybody will want to be on the couch. So I better change it to be in the house, be in the house, be in the house. Oh, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing, that's neurolinguistics. Anyway, didn't know what that was. So Marini alluded to how God made a covenant with himself, Christ Jesus, when the separation of the animals and the blood flowed, and Abraham slept through church. Because there was a covenant that was made with God and man, and it didn't work. That's why there's a new covenant that we are now part of called the Abrahamic covenant. And we talked about it a few weeks ago that the covenant simply means to select the best. But the Abrahamic covenant had a great deal of meaning, but I don't have time to go back through it again. You can go on the web and watch the last few weeks, but it ended with Tav, or the 22nd letter of the ancient Hebrew, and it means to return to its purpose, intended purpose. To return, in other words, when the Abrahamic covenant was birthed, Jesus went into hell, took everything back that the enemy had stole over 6,000 plus years, and left him resourceless and resurrected as the firstborn of the grave so that we could be born again now through the blood of Christ. I said you're born again through the blood of Christ. Again, it's the blood, and that's the blood that has the power. And for some reason, the church seems to have drifted away from talking about the blood. We've drifted away from talking about the cross that drained all of the blood that was covered with the blood because it offended somebody. It was designed to offend sin, so if you're offended, you're just in sin, that's all. That was too deep, I know. And so, but we got to get back to the essentials. We're saved by the blood. It was the blood that remissed our sin, past, present, and future. Come on, somebody. Okay, what kind of blood was this blood? 
This was the DNA of Father God. If you get that straight in your head, it's not natural blood. It is supernatural blood. And that's what took place in Mary. The DNA comes from the Father. It was planted in Mary. And the, Jesus was bo born with his DNA, blood that could not die. It could not kill that blood on the cross of Calvary, but it was able to flow entirely every drop from the body of Jesus hung on the cross. That's why there were spikes in his feet so that every drop could drain and it could remiss whosoever should call on the name of the Lord past, present, and future sin from our lives that we could be redeemed by the blood. You are re you're redeemed by the blood. You're cleansed by the blood. You're empowered by the blood. Why wouldn't we talk about the blood? Ooh, it's kind of gross, Pastor. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but when you read the word, you go, oh my gosh. See, Abrahamic covenant was God's plan from the foundation. That's why we talked about be it being the first letter an I of the first letter in the Bible. God's intent from the beginning to when Jesus said it is finished was the house of the Lord. The preparation place for his bride for eternity. And the Abrahamic covenant was birthed at that point when Jesus said it is finished what was finished? The complete price. The blood has paid the price. The blood has made available a born again situation that now we can receive. That blood became flesh and dwelled among us and it had to pay, the flesh had to pay a complete price which is what Jesus did. But the blood could not die. When you get born again you just changed fathers. You just inherited your saved. The life is in the blood. Somebody say amen. amen. The life is in the blood. The Bible tells us that. Over and over Jesus said, if you drink my blood, if you drink my blood, if you don't drink my blood, you have no part, a part of me. You have to consume it. That's what co communion's all about, is to remind us that his body was broken for us, the bread. That's why you're not supposed to break the bread. Did you know that? You're supposed to let it dissolve. That's kind of religious, but because his body was broken for us. Not we break it. See, you can't do any part of your salvation because it is all done by the blood. Every part of it was done. In fact, the law went away. Your intercourse with the law has gone. You need to let it go. Grow up and understand grace and that when you understand grace, you can begin to operate. That grace will teach you to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion and make your life better. Amen. Grace was provided so that everyone, in fact at the cross, again there was the birth of the promises of God. Now faith and grace, grace qualifies us to receive. Faith is the power to receive it. Called believe what God said. Well oh, that's deep. The power of the blood. Just, I thought, so if we're, if we're returning to the original intent, and I tried to package this up, to return to the original intent of God, you have the garden situation, Eden and the church, and, and the family and the church, and we've talked all about that. So, but what, what was the intent of that? The intent was the birth of the gospel took place in the garden. 
the gospel, the whole gospel, is not going into the nations with salvation and getting everybody saved, and they're still messing up their water with their human waste and dying young. Well, praise God we got them saved, but we're still sending them to heaven way too early. So there's a whole package to the gospel, and that's what those four rivers represented. So it was simply prosperity was God's plan. He didn't put us on earth to be dirt poor hog farmers like my ancestor. Hello. He wanted us to get born again. That was one of the rivers. Prosperity was one of the rivers. Success was another one. How to live a successful life was one of them. God, that's all different levels. Some people may be worth a hundred million dollars and some may be worth a million dollars and some may be worth a hundred thousand. Success is at all different levels. Having a successful marriage, having successful children, having successful grandchildren. Having... And the last one was redeemed time. How are we using our time? How much time do we waste? I did a study on it and I found out that everyone could handle their family, raise it properly, spend time with their wife, with their children, do a job, work a job, and do all of it and still waste 39 hours a, a week. Which means you could almost work two jobs and never fail at anything. I'm not putting that on you. I'm just talking about redeeming time. Okay, so that's not going good either. So, so those are, those are, that's the gospel that we're supposed to do. If we return to the original intent, then God's original intent was for the assembly to rise up and flow out to the world and expand Eden to the world. Expand the church to the world. Expand the word of God and the truth to the world. Not close it up in some so... Just letting the whole world go to hell... Uh, hello. So we're, he's by the Abrahamic covenant, he's moved us back to God's original intent. The original intent was for a church, for a marriage, for a family, for your children, for life, for life more abundant is all connected to the breath of life that he gave to Adam and Eve to be able to handle the church and their family in the garden. So what are they? We're out there teaching this now to foundational concerning your church, concerning your marriage, concerning your children, concerning your job, concerning your everyday life. And that's five things. Order, keeping things in order. I'm not saying being psychotic, and I'm not even saying neurotic, but life ought to be in order. When it gets out of order, you get distressed, worried, all kinds of things begins to happen and shortens your life and messes up your success level. Then you need to be reasonable. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could find Washington become reasonable? <laughs> and the people that are there. Well, even at our city level, we have some of that. So, well, we actually have it in our church. People are unreasonable. Well, I don't go to church because they just ask for my money. Well, how are you going to build anything without money? How are you going to build God's kingdom? How are you going to reach the world? How are you going to pay for television? How are you going to pay for... Is anybody home? You want your pastor to work for nothing? Live in poverty? I mean, people are not reasonable. Well, I went there, but the sound was too loud. Well, turn your hearing aid down. The seats are too hard, and air conditioning was not cold enough, and not warm enough. And not... You have no idea the complaints I have heard <laughs> through 50 years of ministry. It's, uh, it's interesting. And that's why they don't go to the church and lost their family, marriage, and everything else, because they... over unreasonable lifestyles. So when you've got a reasonable lifestyle, you do everything in moderation. You're reasonable about life. The next one was love. Wouldn't it be awesome if 
had a little bit of love somewhere in this world where people actually loved and cared and had concern for others instead of just themselves? What would that be like? Well, we ought to be the ones that experience it. We're going back to the original intent under the Abrahamic covenant. We should be concerned about others. We should care about others. We should, we should care about where they're going to spend eternity. We should care about what they're doing and, and suffering. We need to care for those that are hurting and hungry and orphanages. and st- We should have care for that. But all of that takes money again. Amen. So you see how love is, is the foundation of God and his house and the lifestyle that he wants us to live, which is connecting to concern for others, not just yourself. Are we hitting, hitting where we live? And then there's something called intelligence is the fourth one. Intelligence is opposite of intellectual. Intellectual is able to identify problems but hasn't got a lick of sense and can't figure out how to solve it. That probably would fit our Senate and our House. I really said too much now, I know. And uh, so, but it, 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 it's intelligence is the ability to think critically and and be able to solve problems and work your way through because God made us more than conquerors, but we have to be able to have good sense on this earth to work our way through problems and situations and never give up and trust God and persevere. How important is all of that? And then the last one is enlightenment, an ability to take the Word of God like we're doing right now and apply it to my daily life. Your marriage needs it. Your children need it. Your job needs it. You need to be able to hear from God and and be enlightened. I'm not talking about new age crap. I'm talking about that word is in the Bible. I don't care if they use it, but we can still use it. It's the illumination from the word of God that helps us have a better day tomorrow by applying faith to a word that God said. This is returning to the original intent. See, when all of this happened on the cross, there was the birth of the kingdom. There was birth of forgiveness. There was birth of salvation. There was birth of the seventh or the Sabbath day. It is the Sabbath day. Not, that's why Jesus said, I am the Sabbath, because they're all talking about you've got to live by the Sabbath in the Old Testament because it's one of the Ten Commandments. But this is the Sabbath. This is the seventh day. So you can go to church any day of the week. Did you know that? God's in operation 24-7, 365. Grace is in operation. Salvation's available. But all of it because of the DNA of the Father that came to this earth and paid the price that wiped out our past, present, and future sin so that we could be fully qualified for the birth of the promise because they have now become available and you are fully qualified to receive them. And if you haven't received them, then you need to start believing to receive them because they are. Everything is and is available because God did it all and rested on the seventh day we're in. Somebody so it's just waiting for you to believe Hallelujah. God yes. every area by the blood of the Lamb gives you deliverance gives you healing gives you prosperity gives you salvation the power of the blood Hallelujah. That's apply true. the blood to every situation Apply it to your subconscious. Apply it to your weaknesses. Apply the blood of Jesus for victory over addictions, for victory over every circumstance and situation because the power is in the blood. Hallelujah. 
you haven't received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive him. God wishes that none should perish, but all should come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Would you reach out and receive Jesus today? God, just pray this prayer with me. Those that might be online, those that are in the house, just repeat this prayer after me. You can change your destiny from darkness to light. I'm not talking about becoming religious. I'm talking about being planted in the kingdom of God. Planted in his house, you can get planted. That's your decision total freedom but receive Jesus today just repeat after me dear father God dear father God I ask you to forgive me I ask you to forgive all my me. sin all my sin and ask you dear Jesus I ask you dear Jesus come into my life come into my life come into my heart into my be heart. my Lord my and my Savior in Jesus name Jesus name amen if you pray